Okay, picking up where we left off, uh, this syndrome can translate to the ridge, and that's when you see driving around on the street uh, the ridge line, you know, of an old barn kind of sagging. You can be sure that something like this is happening inside. Um, my building is nice and straight looking outside. This, the walls are nice and straight. Sometimes here you can have it frost heave stump something up if it was all steel here you pick it up and then you take these joists up and they're pointed down here and then they're pointed down there and weights and stuff start getting translated out and you can see buildings that have a bowing wall or uh, you know over the over the course again of a building like this I shouldn't have drawn that line you can see something like you know the wall bows out and then migrates back in and the roof line comes out and migrates back in you can see things like that but all of those things are simply a factor of changes in the in the foundation what am I going to do about well before I get into that what's the problem with apartment number four what happened here was this wood rotted off and it started dipping, dipping, dipping. And somebody at some point in time did their due diligence, which was to address this issue. They simply didn't fully address the issue. They weren't equipped to pick up the weight of the building or weren't, you know, of a mind to do it. What they did was support it, remove the rotted off wood, and they put in a steel plate under the beam and a four inch steel tube and some more steel on the floor downstairs. Or I beg your pardon, there's. I don't know whether, and this is where I don't know, there's what appears to be the top of a concrete pier showing through the floor that that steel sits on down there. Now that keeps it, I don't normally have standing water downstairs, but just being up like that keeps it out of any kind of standing water that might happen. Anyway, they filled the gap. They took a measurement and they created a steel construct uh, post to fill that gap and stand in there tightly, and that kept this from doing any more sagging, really. It remains to be seen and I'll talk about this in the future, uh, whether or not this has a footing and whether or not this has actually settled down into the ground itself, being spongy, crappy uh, site down here that wasn't um, remediated and the right medium wasn't put in there before they did this building. Um, I can't tell for sure whether this concrete block has moved down more since the steel is here, but the steel was a huge improvement, so they did that much. But when I moved in, this is how things were here, uh, because in the 70s, what happened was when somebody wanted to put those apartments in upstairs, this building settled first, they put the steel in without picking the building back up, and then they did what's called planing the floor. So they built on top of the floor joist, and again, this is exaggerated, it's, it's actually quite subtle up there, it's a matter of an inch or two over the course of the whole room, but they built in and added to the joists, however they did it. They may have taken a square piece of lumber and put it on the side of the joist running down as the, you know, almost like scissor blades and nailed it on as you go all the way along, leaving the top edge of it as the new surface. Whatever they did, they planed the floor. They may have cut pie-shaped pieces and stacked them directly on top of the floor joist as it ran down, you know, being careful about measurements and adding, but then they put subflooring on top of that and they built all of the rooms and everything on top of on top of this plain floor in both of these apartments and now you can see that more in a new video series I'm going to start now that the people in apartment two are leaving we're just about to get somebody moved into apartment number four which is a full renovation series but the people are leaving number two and I actually started to renovate that years ago and I started to pull up this added floor from the knife edge the very last bit of it here where it blends out was like putty filler and then the lumber began and I started chipping and it was just going downhill more and more and more so I had to stop because I was in the kitchen I had to trim this edge with some uh, molding and make it it's just a weird janky uh, it's embarrassing but I didn't feel like coming back to um, it had like linoleum stick down tiles in here so I pulled those up pulled up got work in here and I was just digging a hole farther and farther and farther so I, I said stop trimmed it as like a stage in the kitchen area and left it like that so we'll look at that in that video series when the time comes but what needs to happen here and what we've already done is it needs to be picked back up so dad and i went in the basement last year and we picked this back up to a point sorry for all the sketchy lines here but we got it back up where it needed to be and we, we were working on the beam we were under the beam with jacks so we got the beam back up where it needed to be and the steel was standing here shy by three inches really in a couple there's several of these down the length of the building and so i just put two treated pieces of inch and a half lumber 
in there for the time being to gain that back. I did it in a couple spots and a couple other spots needed less than a whole three inches. But we got it all up and we were using the laser down here and measuring to the bottom of the joists. So we did that over near the wall where it hadn't changed and we just picked this up until that measurement was the same to the laser here as it was over there. We checked all over the place and we're within like an inch all the way around downstairs which is really nice. And that directly affected the first floor where I live so now we're back to a nice arrangement here. And it took this third floor, you go upstairs and that's looking really nice. This is a, just a this is why you begin though with this operation and you don't do it after you've done any building because what happened up here in number 4 and number 2 is now my floor goes uphill like that. Cuz it took that floor plane that they built down into the belly of the floor and it pushed it up. So now it's convoluted in the other direction and everything's finished and trimmed and tall baseboard and cove molding and crown molding and door trim and doorways and everything it's it's a fun house and so I'm really proud of what we were able to do with apartment number four but um, when you paint cleanly and you do a nice design choose nice colors you trim everything elegantly and you, there's still nothing you can do about the fact that it's racked all out of square and twisted up and you'll never make it look as nice as it could be if everything was squared up. Certainly colonial style, uh, with all the lines in colonial moldings and stuff like that, everything must be as square as possible. And it's a best practice anyway. So here's my issue. We fixed this structural problem last year, and then this year I've repainted, retrimmed, reorganized, and, and facelifted apartment number four. But what needs to happen, which is what's going to happen in apartment number two after these people leave, is this extra material needs to be ripped out. We need to go back to bare framing. We need to get dug down to a point where we can see um, that we're back to original framing. Check it. And make, and make any kind of small adjustments up here because it, we should be able to measure it and adjust and get it back to correct. And everything else that we influence should come back to correct because, of course, it was like a house of cards um, in the sense that everything's relative. Any modification to it takes everything else with it. It racks all around in that way. Uh, not a house of cards as a figure of speech. but So for right now, our, our floor in the attic looks great. Our roof has always looked great. Our first floor looks really nice. And uh, the basement is looking good. Apartment number four is a sort of a fun house, and so is apartment number two. But this is the sort of concept that we're going to want to um, make sure that everybody is understanding if they're watching the videos. This is this is where I am here. The other thing that I want to do is something that happened to my parents um, that we did to my parents' house that they did when I was about ten years old, and I think it's going to be hugely. Um, it's gonna it's gonna take the property value of my place to new heights because not only has this uh, is this the state I don't know if I have a good footer here when we picked this building up we were pressing down on the floor and I actually pushed a puddle a, a hole down into the floor uh, with the big cribbing footprint underneath my jack trying to pick the weight of the building up enough to put these blocks in here I pressed into this broke the concrete down and just pressed into this mud floor this it's not necessarily the right medium and I think this footing is also kind of smushing down into there it's going to continue to cause problems as well as the town out here the road is basically right here and they've just added to the road and add to the, since i lived here eight years two or three times now they've added stone and tar stone and tar stone and tar and the dirt keeps filling in and you keep stoning and tiring the road and now look what we got we got a waterproof asphalt road and we've got a downhill slope into a puddle that can come down and percolate through my foundation i've had enough of this this is a big, beautiful building, and it's I can I have all the skills to to be gutting the next time I come through this apartment. I will gut it out completely. This time I will be gutting out number two, and we're gonna see that in a new video. But I've had enough of this here, so we're gonna do what we did to my parents' house when I was a kid. Is we're gonna pick this building up. They're gonna come through here, underneath the floor box, and they're gonna put I-beam in underneath. It's going to run out to the side. And it's a company, the same company that did my parents' house. They've done a couple other big old commercial buildings like this. And we may have to go to another video here. So look out for that. But you put I-beam out underneath here. You put a uh, uh, electronic and hydraulic jack systems out here. And you get every, and you get some wherever you need them all throughout but they're all hooked up together and when you go up they have tremendous power but they also work simultaneously and you take this thing right up and off the foundation uh, which is exciting and I want to do this in the next few years let's uh, pause this and come back for video number three and we'll talk about what that's going to do here for me